Hey folks, welcome to another Movie Hooker YouTube video. I am Gary from Movie Hooker and I have got a big giant pint of coffee today because that's what sort of morning it is. It is freezing. I'm wearing a Benny hat, I'm wearing an Udi and I'm wearing two giant dressing robes underneath this Udi so I'm, I can barely move. But anyway, today's video I wanted to take you through um, what I believe are the best um, South Korean movies to stream on Netflix. Um, Netflix UK and Netflix Ireland, by the way. But as I always say, with every list that I do from Netflix, that a lot of these are Netflix originals. So you'll get them anywhere, but some of them aren't, unfortunately. But anyway, let's just get stuck straight in. The first one that I've got listed here is the like an absolute flawless movie. There's absolutely, it's, it's a perfect film. Perfect films are very, very rare. This is a perfect film, and it is Bong Joon-ho's Parasite. And also, it deserved every single Oscar that that, I don't know how many Oscars, that fucking thing, it just completely cleaned the board. It was unbelievable. And also, I have to give a sad, notable mention, really, to um, Lee Sung Kyung, who recently passed away due to suicide. Um, very, very tragic. He was a phenomenal actor, so RIP to that guy. Um, Parasite is basically about the clash of two cultures, or like, you know, between the wealthy and the poor. Um, it focuses on this really poor family who live in a really cramped basement basement apartment. And it's that cramped that the highest point in this this little basement, the highest point, the highest point is the toilet. And it's really cramped. You can barely, you can't even stand up. So the, this family, the daughter of this family then gets a job with a wealthy family, sort of cons her way in, lays and cons her way in and she starts tutoring one of the children in this wealthy family. That's all I'm going to say. Then the two families start getting brought in together and it's, it's phenomenal with tragic consequences in pure South Korea fashion. South Korean fashion, sorry. So that's Parasite. Um, it also stars my favorite South Korean actor, um, Song Kang Ho. Um, I adore him. Anything that he does, I will watch. Anything, I don't care what it is. Right, so that's Parasite. Next up, we have the Wailing. This is another really, really good movie. Probably gets better with each viewing. Um, I think I've seen it like three times now. There's a lot to take in. It's a bit, bit confusing, confusing, and it can be, it can be a little bit slow moving in times. But it's about this cop who has to investigate this um, really strange illness in this rural village where a lot of villagers have been dying, and his little daughter is sick, and everything points to this. Nah, this Japanese man who recently moved into like a close mountain region and they think that he is behind the sickness. Um, it's full. This is steeped in South Korean tradition, which I absolutely adore about South Korean horror movies. We're not just getting, you know, we just don't get the, 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 the westernized shit. You know, we get steeped in their history. We get to see proper humans and traditional dances and it's, it's, they're always, and the, Second costumes are always beautiful as well. So that's The Wailing. Also, The Wailing is from the director of The Chaser, Na Hong Jin. I think you call this guy, but don't be um, quoting my South Korean pronunciation, please. So, yeah, he is the director of another one of my favorite South Korean movies and one of the movies that pretty much got me into South Korean cinema, I guess one of the movies why Movie Hooker exists this day, and that's called The Chaser. If you haven't seen The Chaser, um, then you're missing out. Simple as The Chaser is a serial killer movie based on a true story about this cop, um, ex-cop, sorry, ex-cop turned pimp. And the, he, the pimp starts noticing that his girls have been going missing. And he starts, he notices then that they've all been going missing around the same spot. And this is, it's a really clever serial killer movie because it sort of flips the genre. And you are, you know, I'm not spoiling anything here when I say this, but the serial killer is caught very early on. And it's just a fucking tense, tense movie. What happens? It's a real cat and mouse thriller. So when I just got a little bit off guard, off topic there, but that's the wailing. And then I mentioned the chaser. If you haven't seen the chaser, check out both of them. Right. Next up is the phenomenal. I actually only watched this last night again. Um, it is feckin' brilliant. And I, this is another movie. I think I believe truly that it gets better with every view. Um, this is called Night in Paradise. This is a Netflix original, whereas Parasite and The Whalen aren't. Night in Paradise is. So if you haven't seen that, get 
your Netflix on right now and get ready to watch it. It is the weekend, however. It's not what it's, it doesn't matter. Anyway, Night in Paradise. Right, here's another reason. Even before you watch this, that I can convince you to watch it even before you know what it's about. This movie is written, not only written, it is also directed by, uh, what's his name? Uh, yes, Park Hung Jong. Park Hung Jong, if you do not know, is the writer behind. Oh, don't mind my xenomorph. He's lost his head. The fucking dog knocked him over. I Saw the Devil. That's who Park Hung Jong is. He is the writer of I Saw the Devil. But he's usually just the writer. This movie he writes and directs. And it is just... It, like, it doesn't matter what genre this man touches. This man is just one of the greatest minds in cinematic history. I do believe that, strongly believe that. Um, I'm not going to give a lot away. This movie is called Night in Paradise. It is a gangster movie about a gangster who um, has, to go to, has to go and lay low in an island. Um, he had a tra something tragic happen to him. He lost some loved ones. And then this whole big gang thing completely messed up and he has to go into hiding. But he meets two people when he's on this island and these two people get involved with the gang stuff as well. And eventually everybody finds out where he is and there's a big showdown. It is absolutely brilliant. The drama in it, the characters are so well written, just like any South Korean thing. Check it out. It's not your typical gangster movie. It's sort of like a gangster movie about gangsters rather than the gangsters doing gangster stuff, if you know what I mean. Um, the, car the main character just happens to be a gangster. But anyway, that is Night in Paradise, and that is a Netflix original, so you will get to watch it anywhere. Oh, here's another Netflix original, and another Netflix original, and another Netflix original. So the next three are Netflix originals. Right, this one is called Kingdom Ashen of the North. I am sure everybody has seen this already. Um, if you don't not if you do not know what kingdom is, then I'd slap you with this glove. Um, yes, Kingdom is one of the best zombie series in the world. It is phenomenal. It they have sort of South Korea has reinvented the zombie genre with Kingdom, giving us not only zombies, I would call them zompires. Like they they hide away during the day and they come out at night and they just want to tear you apart. So Kingdom Ashen of the North is a standalone feature length episode of Kingdom. And it like Kingdom is about this flower and this flower has these special dark uh, abilities to bring the resurrect the dead. And there's a king that is sick and they try and use this flower on him to try and make him better. But the king comes back, a ravenous zombie, starts infecting his staff. And then next thing you know, apocalypse so kingdom ashen of the north focuses on it's a prequel that focuses on the discovery of this flower i think it's called the resurrection flower or the resurrection plant i'm not sure it is phenomenal great cast as well the not brilliant budget the zombies look great or the zompires look great so that's kingdom ashen of the north um next up alive hashtag alive i believe it's called um another zombie movie I didn't do that intentionally, or did I? Or did I? Probably self subconsciously. Right, so Alive is about a gamer who is a bit of a recluse. He just likes to sit in a dark room all day with headphones on, shouting at people in online gaming. Next thing he knows, takes off his headphones, goes out, and the place has been taken over by zombies. He barricades himself in this little apartment, and he's only got so much supplies. Everything is a party. At the start, he's like, yes, word up, freaking drinking loads, smoking loads. And then he runs out of supplies and he has to get out. This is great. And it stars the phenomenal, the phenomenally talented Yu Ah-In, who I think has been served a freaking seriously shit dish of shite recently. That didn't even make sense. But, you know, the poor guy's up for, like, he's been removed from Hellbound and, like, his acting career is in limbo because of drugs, you know, treat people fucking like treat addicts, you know, as a, like in a hospital, get them better. Don't treat them as fucking criminals and destroy their life over something. Anyway, 
But that's that's alive, and it's a great zombie movie. The zombies look great. Again, when I say that they reinvent the genre, like they're just not bumbling zombies. Like you know, every time they move, you can hear like <laughs> all their bones crack, and it, it it sounds sore to be a South Korean zombie. Put it that way. Right next up is Believer. Okay, Believer and Believer Two are both on Netflix, and Believer is. A remake of Johnny Toe's Chinese action movie from 2012, Drug War. And it's a very basic sort of story, but it's really, really good. Um, a cop who is hellbent on catching one of the biggest dealers in Asia teams up with a violent gang member to get revenge and bring him down. It's phenomenal. Check it out. So that's Believer. I'm going to just keep moving on. And Believer 2, that's on Netflix as well. Next up is The Call. This is a really good little creepy horror movie about this woman who loses her phone but then finds another phone inside the house that she's now living in and this phone rings and she answers it and it's a girl from 20 years ago but she's calling from inside the same house. It's a bit of a mind fuck and this girl's claiming that her mother is going to kill her. Her mother thinks that she's going to be a serial killer and it's a, it's a real mind fuck. Very, very well written and yeah, that's the call. We'll move straight on from that. So next up, Oh, The Call's a Netflix original as well. Next up is Forgotten. Uh, one of the finest movies ever written, I believe, is Forgotten. Uh, I'm, I was just shocked at how, like, not how well directed this movie was, but how well constructed it was. It was just put together so well. Um, <laughs> you have no idea that absolutely... No idea where this movie is going to go. I guarantee you. The only way that you'll figure out what happens in this movie is if you travel fucking forward in time two hours and then tell me. That's it. There's no way. The twists are so good in this film. All I will say about it, it's about this brother who idolizes his older brother. He's like the perfect dude. Lecturer, can do DIY. All the ladies love him. He's just like the... A really good big brother and one day then the wee brother then sees him get abducted in a van and it completely de destroys his life the cops can do nothing uh, but then 19 days later he comes back just walks in goes word up he's like where were you and he's like what do you mean he says you were abducted so then the little brother starts noticing slight changes in his big brother and he starts to question is it actually his big brother that's all I'm going to say about that, guys. Hello, Minnie. I'm not letting you out. Um, yes, so that's Forgotten. And that's a Netflix original as well. Next up um, is The Chase. This is good. I think the only thing I disliked about The Chase was the music. Not that the music was bad or anything. I just think that the music just wasn't... Um, it didn't fit the movie very well. It made it sort of very uplifting. When I don't like my serial killer movies uplifting, I like them, I like them depressing and violent. So the chase is a, ser a serial killer movie about a landlord who starts to notice that his residents are being killed. The arrival of a hardened cop comes with the news that these killings may be the work of a serial killer who has been evading capture for the past thirty years. Mm. So that is the chase. Um, I think that's an oh, I think that's a Netflix original as well. And last but not least is The Drug King. Um, this ain't a perfect movie, but it goes on the list anyway because it's it's an actually really, really good still, but it goes on the list because it stars Song Kang Ho. And as I told you before, um, I'd watch anything with him. So he it's based on a true story and it's set in the 70s and it's just about the rise of this petty criminal criminal criminal? Sorry to uh, become one of uh, Asia's biggest drug dealers and it also follows the cop that will stop at nothing to bring him down and bring him to justice. Um, so that is it, guys. Just let me reiterate everything here very, very quickly. Okay, we got Parasite. This ain't a Netflix original. That's the Bong Joon-ho movie. We've also got The Whelan. Also not a, a Netflix original. Night in Paradise, the gangster, the movie about gangsters from the writer of I Saw the Devil. K 
Kingdom, Ashen of the North is the prequel to the Netflix series Kingdom. Alive is a South Korean zombie movie. Believer, and I also mentioned Believer 2, are two drug movies, drug V, cops, gangster stuff, and they're both on Netflix as well. The Call is a South Korean um, time-bending horror movie that is also on Netflix. Forgotten is one of the best finally written movies in existence. Also on Netflix, The Chase. I'm not sure if it's on Netflix, but still a very decent serial killer drama. And The Drug King, also on Netflix, um, based on a true story about one of uh, South Korea's biggest drug lords. So, guys, that is it. Thank you very, very much for watching. If you enjoyed this list, hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. Thank you, Word Up.